Okay, so what I've tried to do here is combine chapter 15 um, and 16 together and, um, you know, not to uh, bore you, but hopefully you'll begin to see how these judgments are, the seven judgments are coming upon the earth. Um, and in John saying, I see this again, I'm, I'm being revealed this information, these, these visions, and I'm now going to communicate it to um, his audience, communi communicates it to us. So God's wrath is completed. And uh, so he says, I saw the heaven, another great and marvelous sign, the seven angels and the seven last plagues. Um, this seems to be happening during the second half of the tribulation. Um, they're singing, they're worshiping God. Um, and note that that's what's opposite of what non-Christians do. They don't worship God. They don't worship the Creator. They do what's opposite of what the Creator wants, Romans 1. And so since see this heavenly song is being sung, um, and uh, John is saying, I hear it, I see it, and um, then that news, um, all the nations will come and worship before you. This is a great song right here. Someone should write a melody line to this and maybe sing it. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of all the ages. Who will, who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? Um, and so we move from this song, and now we see the seven gold bowl judgments. Um, the temple's opened up, um, and now John's going to show us what these things are going to look like. What are the judgments going to look like? And uh, no one could enter the temple. Uh, no one... Uh, was able to interrupt these these judgments that are going to come. And so chapter 16 then shows us the temple was closed. Um, we're given this command, the, the angel's given the command to go pour out the, 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 the judgment of God's wrath. And just know that there are similarities between the different uh, trumpet and bold judgments. Um, commonality, you'll see the earthquakes reappearing from chapter 11 moving forward. And, um, and then uh, you'll note that um, uh, the people had a mark, again, symbolic that their worship is not to God, but to um, the beast or to the Antichrist. They're not worshiping God. They're not, they're not caring about holiness. And in uh, the biblical absolutes, they, they have rejected God, and they move, they're moving farther and farther away. Just very uh, um, originary to what Romans says, that um, um, mankind is depraved uh, and does, does contrary to what God has, um, has required or, or created man to do. Then we have the second bold judgment. The sea uh, is turning to blood. Remember in the um, first bull, um, you know, uh, it's, again, the pouring out of the bull, the painful sores are breaking out on people. So now the sea is, uh, is unuseful for um, living things. You're not able to catch uh, fish in the great seas. And then it goes even further to the local springs and water. So that creek near your house is, is no longer useful for fishing. And so sorry, fishermen uh, in class, you, you are not going to be able to fish during the second half of the tribulation. Um, and then we move to the fourth bowl that talks about um, the, the sun um, scorching the earth and, and drying up and, and the heat being intensified um, for those who um, uh, don't worship God. But, and so what I did here is I, I highlighted for you, they cursed the name of God. Wow. Who had control over all these plagues and they refused to repent and glorify Him. Might that not be us? Might we repent? Might we um, call people to the gospel? Um, they cursed the name of the Lord, and we have a lot of people that do that. Even when um, bad things happen in our day, they, they continue to curse God and, and lift up their fists and point God how um, He is um, not helpful. Again, the fifth bull, um, the angel pulls out the bull, the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. And symbolic of the time of Jesus when He died, the darkness filled the land. Um, it's, it's helpless to see that you know, in a sense, God's presence is um, silenced, and they're not able to um, see him. Um, Euphrates, a great river of water, symbolic of vegetation and, and um, fertile in the fertile crescent of, of, of accommodating rock. So if you look at the map, you'll see that between the Tigris and Euphrates, that is just a, a great place, a great agricultural location, um, similar to California in the Green Valley area 
where farmers um, plant their vegetation and fruit. And again, um, this is um, this is also taken away for the people here on Earth. And then you have in chapter 13, 16, um, 13 through 16, you, the beginnings of, of the Armageddon, the, the dragon, the, the frogs, um, and the false prophets, and the kings of the earth coming uh, to gather uh, on that great day, the battle of Armageddon, and um, going to make war against the nation of, of Israel. I, I want to point out in your Bibles, uh, English Bibles, you often see parenthesis, uh, parentheses, and that's what we call editorial comment. And the editor is making additional inference or commentary on the verses that he just um, included. So he's helping you uh, understand the verse a little bit more, giving you additional um, data for you to interpret uh, the, um, the section. So that's what's happening here in verse 15 um, with the parenthesis statement. And you'll see that especially in the New American Standard Bible uh, for your help. Now, lastly, the seventh bowl, uh, it is done. Uh, he pours out the bowl, uh, and out of the temple came a loud voice of him saying, it is done. And the great earthquake takes place in verse 18 through 20, um, like never before. Uh, every island fled away from the mountains could not be found. What 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 devastation takes place and and people are um, uh, dying. Uh, so chapter six we have earthquake. Chapter eleven we have an earthquake, and then in chapter sixteen we again we have another earthquake helping us uh, to see. And then lastly, as you see this uh, seventh bowl, the final hailstones coming from the sky and causing terrible plagues, uh, so terrible that God unleashes upon sin upon those who reject um, the Lord. And, and then chapter 17 gets into the issue of, uh, of the post of the judgment, the great Babylon, the great harlot, and I'll try to include that next week as you uh, move forward. So I hope this kind of helps uh, uh, clarify. Um, again, this is just large summary. We're going rather quickly. And I'm hoping as graduate school students, you will slow down a little bit and um, be able to just maybe discern where you're at in the hermeneutical uh, interpretation of eschatolo eschatology and the timelines that might be different amongst even the class here and amongst our denomination. So may God bless you.